you assess the performance of the Lib Dems in the county council election? Well, in in Kent, we've done slightly better than the national trend. Um, And uh, obviously, we're disappointed not to have made more gains. We expected the the, um, fall in the Labour vote and the UKIP vote to come more to us. And in fact, it went more to the Tories, exactly as Mrs May, I'm sure, intended when she called the snap election. But we're delighted that uh, we're welcoming Anthony Hook, who romped home in Faversham on a very pro-European ticket. And nationally, our party membership is at an all-time high. Our share of the vote increased by 7% more than any other party. And we are reviving in some of our stronger areas. And in Kent, of course, we're pleased to be back leading the opposition to the Conservatives. We've, We've done that before in Kent. And yet again, I think the message has come through that in Kent, the Liberal Democrats are the enduring opposition to the Conservatives. Because you are effectively the second largest party on the council, but can you really challenge the Conservatives with just, what, six seats now? Well, there are there are um, uh, 18, I think it is, opposition members, and we should be looking to the Labour members and the Green Party to be uh, doing this job together with us. It will be difficult, yes, because, uh, for instance, the five new La- the five Labour members are all new councillors um, and inexperienced, as far as I know, and so whoever uh, leads the opposition will have a difficult job. But uh, I heard what Paul Carter said, and he's right that in any system you need a really good scrutiny process and um, uh, we have a system in Kent where 10 people out of the 81 make decisions, just 10 people and it's very important that those 10 people are questioned very strongly about issues. It can be done but what Paul Carter needs to be doing is to set up scrutiny in such a way that it can be effective and he should be taking the first step towards that which is to make sure that the chairman of the scrutiny committee is a an opposition leader. At the moment all of the scrutiny that takes place in KCC is chaired by the Conservatives themselves and given the the size of their majority they have 67 seats on the county of 81 there is no way that they can be outvoted and therefore I can see no good reason why they should not allow the um, scrutiny committee to be chaired by the opposition which is what national best practice is and it's what Kent's own remuneration panel recommended. And that's what you'll be calling for? Absolutely. We've been calling for it since the system was changed about eight years ago. The the, uh, remuneration panel at KCC, who are independent people elected to do this job, told KCC, you will not get effective scrutiny unless the opposition leads the scrutiny committee. So in one respect, disappointment for both of you. How do you now assess your party's chances in the general election, Gordon? General election is going to be extremely difficult, and um, if, if one's honest and one's realistic, um, I think um, Theresa May has played that trump card, and she's. I see this as a, in a way, as a second referendum vote. Um, she's gone to the country saying that she wants um, a much larger majority in government so that she can carry out a Brexit. Uh, negotiations in the way she wants to do. Um, I don't believe that 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 that's the, the it'll be in the way that other people, the country, want it to go. But that's what she's done, and therefore, I can see like these local elections being quite a large, massive majority for the Conservatives in 34 days' time. And do the Lib Dems see it the same way then? I think it depends very much on two issues. I think it depends very much on the party being able to explain much more clearly what hard Brexit and soft Brexit mean. So many people on the doorstep and indeed politicians have no idea what those terms mean. And we need to explain much more clearly and probably for the first time what the effect of leaving Europe is going to do to individuals. Because it doesn't really matter whether you voted to remain or to leave. No one knows right now what the deal is that we're going to be offered. And it's a bit like early retirement. It sounds like a really good idea until you realise that it depends on the deal that you get from your boss because it's going to have to last you a long time. So it makes perfect sense that, as only the Liberal Democrat Party says, there has to be a vote on what the deal is and whether we would be better off out or in. And only the Liberal Democrats are saying that that should be the case. It is the public who need to make that choice, not the politicians at Whitehall. 
Trudy Dean, leader of the Lib Dem group, who was re-elected yesterday, and Gordon Cowan, who uh, led the Labour group on the King County Council, but lost his seat. Thank you both for being with us. BBC Radio.